Hi there. My name is Chuck Rosansky and I own Mile High Comics. Um, there's a lot that people think about Mile High Comics. We've been in business now for going on 46 years and I've sold a couple hundred million dollars worth of comics to fans around the world. And over that period of time we've made a lot of friends and a few enemies. And uh, since your enemies tend to be louder than your friends, a lot of times misconceptions get put out there in the world and these videos, this series of videos that we're going to be doing are designed to give the truth and to provide people with the opportunity to judge themselves about the uh, validity of Mile High Comics in the comics world and the place that we're trying to achieve through what I believe are good works. Um, I'll start off with a magazine here that I dug out of my archives this morning. Um, in 1998 I was interviewed by People Magazine and uh, they wanted me to um, be all kinds of wild and crazy because that's what they sell. Uh, but the basic premise of why I did the article was because I wanted to get out the word back in those very early days of the World Wide Web that we were commencing with this enormous research project and the research project was to try and document every single comic book that has ever been produced in the United States and also international editions of US comics. And in looking at this article it's fun to see how true we've stayed to that vision. In the 18 years since this article was first released we have managed to put nearly a million scans of comics online and to create well over 400,000 individual entry items into our database of comics, comics variants, books related to comics, and a little bit away in the way of ephemera, like for example, uh, uh, promo pieces that were done about comics, like an Alpha Flight number one uh, variant poster, things of that ilk. But the basic premise is, is that we run Mile High Comics not to make money. If I wanted to make money, the building that I'm sitting in right now has enough equity in it that I could sell the building and no longer have to sell a single comic book for the rest of my life. And yet, here in this building we have two million comics. In a building that's 10 blocks away, we have another 6 million comics. And in a long-term storage facility we have up in Boulder, we have yet another 2 million comics for a total of 10 million. Now, that's an important number to the extent that it explains what we do here at the Jason Street Megastore. And the title of this particular video is about the secrets of the mega store, and I'm going to kind of reveal those and understanding that what we do here and what we're intending to do is research will make some of what I'm about to tell you seem more realistic and a little more believable. So let's take this moment and go outside the door here and you'll be able to see what I get to see every day when I leave my office. So, this is the view that I get to show all the visitors who I take on personal tours through the mega store. We start off in my office, which is all quiet, has no windows, just a single skylight, and then we walk out here into this grand vista, which I call our Cathedral of Comics. This is a place that is designed for comic book collectors, people who love graphic art, and really not for a lot of other people. Um, Unlike a lot of comic shops, we don't carry all the ephemera, pop culture type things unless we end up with them as a result of some side deals that we do or if we buy them off the diamond remainder list. Um, we're not interested in selling popular culture all that much. Um, what we're interested in selling primarily are comics, graphic novels, trade paperbacks. And so looking in this grand vista, over here to the one end of the building, you will see 300,000 plus comic book trades and hardbacks. 
and a lot of them are ones that you cannot get in any other comic book retail store in the world because frankly they don't give a damn. Um, they're obscure titles that nobody else wants and yet to us they're important because they fill a niche. They, they were created at one time. Um, they may be a very small subset of people that might ever be interested in them. But we try to carry everything here and that includes small press independent titles, that includes titles that may have been done as a giveaway, comics that were done um, on a whim and maybe something that was done as a uh, like as an adjunct to a gallery show for a particular creator to us everything is collectible and is important to document this building is not a comic book store and that is the first secret that I'm going to reveal to you screw that it's not a comic book store it is my research center and it's where we have enough room to take all the collections, all the back rooms of other dealers that I buy out and search through that material looking for the really cool and obscure stuff that no one else gives a damn about. And that is what this place is designed to do. The fact that we set it up in such a way that we can sell out of it is actually a secondary goal. And this is something that most people can't fathom. But it really is the truth. When I bought this building, there was no intention of opening a retail store in it. None. All right. Another secret of the Jason Street store is that here in the back, we have 300,000 trade paperbacks and hardbacks. These particular ones in the aisle that we're walking in right now have all been in the possession of the company for at least five years. And for most comic book retailers or bookstore owners, everything is based on turnover. Their goal is to sell them as quickly as they can. That is not my goal. I run Mile High Comics not to sell comics, but to buy more comics and more trades in any given week. If I go through one year to the next year and I don't make any cash profit, that doesn't bother me as long as I end up the year with more comics and more books. I am sort of like the ultimate collector because I don't just want some of them, I want all of them. And this is a passion that I haven't seen evidenced in a lot of my contemporaries in the field. Their goal is that they're widgets, okay? They, they buy and sell comics because the transactional nature creates wealth for them. I don't want wealth. I want more books. And so the very fact that I bought these five or more years ago makes me very happy. This is my success showing here, whereas for most retailers, having something in stock for five years is to them a failure. It's, it's a detriment. We keep things in stock. Now, that having been said, as things get older, in my mind, they, bec they become harder to get, they become more collectible, and as such, they deserve the respect of having higher prices attached to them. This is also something that a lot of other people don't do. They'll see a book from 30 years ago and they'll look it up online to find the absolute cheapest price that book has ever sold for and they'll just dump it. They're just flippers. They do not have any interest whatsoever in how rare that book is. They're just getting rid of it. I don't do that. I never dump things. To me, all of the books that have ever been printed like this deserve respect. And if I have to sit on these books for another 30 years, I'll do that because I love them. So, but let's go further on here. Um, this point right here. When we moved into this building um, three and a half years ago, this is how many books we had. It was from here over, it was about 200,000 volumes. This number right here is 16,000 for those who can't read it. Um, on the far end now, as of last Friday, they put in number 131,000 in the numbering sequence, um, which if my math is correct, means that we've added about 115,000 books in the three and a half years since we moved into this building. Now, 
We've sold about 15,000 of those, but that means that we've made a 100,000 unit net gain in the number of books that we offer on our website just over the past 43 months.